Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to one more lecture on econometrics. In last two to three classes, we, we were discussing about the dummy variable regression model. In the just previous video, we discussed the various uses of dummy variable regression model and we have discussed or we have already seen uh, the uses of the dummy variable to depict the interaction effects between two qualitative dummy variables or two qualitative attributes okay so today i am going to show you one more uses of or one more uh, highly uh, useful method of useful idea that can be captured using dummy variable regression model okay yeah so in this video or in this lecture what I'm going to uh, what what we are going to see is how we can use the dummy variable method as an alternative to the chow test okay so uh, this term you may not be aware about this term or you you it's 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 new to you chow test uh, what is this chow test is chow test is basically to check whether there is any structural changes in a relationship or not okay so in what kind of data the structural change may happen the structural change may be happen only in time series data that means when we when we when we use the time series data there may be a changes in the relationship over a period of times okay so in this time uh, in structural change we mean that the parameters of a model do not remain the same throughout the end period suppose we are checking a relationship for the uh, 100 years in all these 100 years the relationship may not be hold and at a uh, or the coefficient may not be uh, same for all this period the coefficient may be shifted okay so why this coefficients are shifting or why there is a structural change it has a lots of internal and external reasons or endogenous and exogenous reasons are there for example when you look at the uh, oil prices you can see in 1983 or 1973 there is a drastic the drastic increase in the petroleum prices okay so if you are doing any kind of analysis with the go, uh, petroleum data you can see that before this 1973 there is a relationship and after this the relationship with oil relationship of any macroeconomic financial variable with this oil price you can see there is a structural there is a changes there's a policy there's a shift and this happened because of the drastic rise in the petroleum prices due to the OPEC oil price embargo. What is this OPEC oil price embargo? In 1970s, uh, the petroleum price, the uh, pricing of the petroleum prices has been shifted from uh, the seven sister company of US into that of the OPEC. Okay, And OPEC has an unlimited, uh, got the unlimited freedom to change the prices. And when the Arab-Israel war broke out, okay the OPEC which is basically comprises of many Arab countries they have desired to increase the petroleum prices to punish the to punish those nations who are supporting the Israel especially the US okay and due to this fact the OPEC, the oil price has been increased drastically and it has an unlimited effects of uh, many western and u.s countries and it also affected the india also okay so 
if you are if you are doing any kind of analysis taking the relationship with the gold oil prices uh, the 1973 and 1991 uh, oil price embargoes that can uh, shift the relationship okay then when you come to india if you are doing any kind of analysis with exchange rate you can see there is a policy of shift in 1993 india adopted a manager floating exchange rate regime then in 1993 india adopted new economic policy we have liberalization happened okay then privatization happened so because of this shift if you take any kind of macroeconomic variable like uh, especially macroeconomic and forex variable or uh, external variable you can see there is a shift in this relationship in 1991 because of these policies okay and recently you can see that uh, india government or the nda government led by this modi uh, he has introduced a gst and demonetization so whenever you do any analysis with money or uh, m3 you can see that there is a, a crunch in this money supply in this demonetization period that means the monetary policy variables or any kind of uh, macroeconomic variable has got changed after this demonetization if you look at uh, the government revenues the adoption of the gst has it has its sort impact okay so this adoption of gst the demonetization policy all these policy changes may disturb a relation a macroeconomic or financial relationship okay so what i'm trying to say that in an economic relationship this kind of a policy changes external changes or internal changes may affect and due to this fact we cannot uh, we cannot guarantee that our parameters will remain the same throughout the entire period of the analysis okay yes so let me take an example real example okay saving income relationship in india we are going to analyze how the saving and income relationship what is the strength of this relationship or what is the uh, marginal propensity to save of the people of the country okay we are doing an aggregate analysis okay and assume that we have a data on disposable personal income and personal saving from 1980 to 2005 we have almost having 26 years of the aggregate data on uh, personal consumption expenditure and personal saving data okay then what we have done we have run a regression like saving is a function of disposable income saving as a function of disposable income okay and when you do this analysis and when we when we do the analysis we assume that there is no any structural changes that means over this 26 years of time this relationship between the saving and cons uh, saving and income do remain the same or remain the same okay but in between this period there is a policy changes happen in india so very crucial policy changes new economic policy of 1991 okay so this new economic policy has changed everything in the country consumption saving investment pattern and everything okay and sometime this 1991 policy may disturb this relationship that means before this 1991 there there is a a particular pattern of the relationship and after this 1991 there is another pattern of the relationship okay so we have to check we have to check 
whether this 1991 policy has got any effect on the saving income relationship in India. How can we do that? For that, we have an option. What's the option? You do a regression. Do a regression like this. Yt is equal to gamma 0 plus gamma 1 xt plus u3. Okay. That means this contains the whole period 1980 to 2005, 26 years. Okay. So you done a, you do a regression by taking the entire data. Then you will get these coefficients gamma 0 and gamma 1. Okay. The next, what you do, you take the data from 1980 to 2000 as a 1991, only 12 years of the initial data, that means before the crisis, before the new economic policy. Okay, then run a regression and find out this alpha 0 plus alpha 1 xt plus u1t. Okay, then take the next data. 1992 to 2005, 14 years of data, then you find out this beta 0 and beta 1. Now, how, how we can understand these theories and structural change? What we do for that? You check whether these two coefficients are same and these two coefficients are same. And this, whether these two coefficients are matching this gamma 0 and gamma 1 coefficient. Or you check alpha 0 is equal to beta 0 is equal to gamma 0 and alpha 1 is equal to beta 1 is equal to gamma 1. If all these coefficients are one and same, then you can say that there is no any structural change in all yeah, in two different period of study, in two different period, the result is the same. So the parameter is do not vary. The parameter is be fixed. So there is no structural change. Okay. Yeah. So how can how how can we check it? We can run three different regression. Okay. So I have done the regression. I'm not showing you how. Because you know that how to do the regression. Okay. So from 1980 to 2005, I have got this kind of regression 62.424 alpha 0 and 0 0.034 beta. Okay. Then when then I have done this regression 1980 to 1991, and then this regression 1992 to 2005. You compare this regression. All these are all same. No. In first equation, we are getting 1.10, then 0 0.08. Second one, 153, we are getting, then 0 0.01. 62.42, 0 0.03. What does it mean? If you look at the slope coefficient, you can see there is a significant difference 0 0.01, 0 0.03 and 0 0.08. Okay. So you can see in this period 1980 to 1991, the people are saving more because the, the uh, marginal consumption for, or marginal propensity to consume, uh, con, uh, marginal point to save is 0 0.0 which is very high. Okay, whereas it is only 0 0.01 after the new economic policies. So, there is a policy shift. Okay, yes. So, running a common regression disregarding the possible differences in this two sub period may create some problem in our analysis. Okay, so without considering this a policy, if you run a regression, then we will get some result, but that result will mislead us. Okay. So, what we do? 
we have to include these structural changes. Okay. So, how we can check? First, I will show you how we can check whether there is structural changes or not using a test which is developed by Chow. Uh, it is known as Chow test. <coughs> okay. So, before going that, before going to that, let me introduce you the four different types of regression. Okay. So, we have done, uh, we have divided the data into two different parts and we have run the regression, two regressions, then both intercept and slope are same. Okay. Then if it is, it is known as coincidence regression. Look at, this is the slope of the two regression. So, and this is the intercept of the two regression, both are same. So, this type of regression is known as coincidence regression. Okay. Whereas, the intercept differ but slope is the same. When we do the two different regression, for one, uh, for both regression, the slope coefficient are one and same, but the intercept is different. Okay. Look at this. For this and this, slope is one and same but for this this is the intercept and this intercept is small so this is what we called parallel regression okay and in the third case slope is different but intercept is same in both cases the intercept is the same but the slope is different look at the slope it is different Okay, and the last case is the uh, this is this is known as the concurrent regression. Okay, if both if slope is different but the intercept is same, then it is known as concurrent regression. And last one is dissimilar regression. It is if both intercept and slopes are different. If you have run a two different regression by dividing the uh, data, okay, like that we have done before 1982 1991 one regression. And 1991 or 1992 2005, another regression. If you run this two regression, then both if both slope and intercept are different, okay, then it is known as dissimilar regression. So, you tell me this is what is the case of this. In this, both slope as well as intercept are different so this is an example of a dissimilar regression okay so if our regression are parallel concurrent dissimilar then we have to assume that there is a third factor which is affecting this relationship okay and if you are taking the time, if, if our data is in time series, then we have to assume that this is due to the problem of structural changes. Okay. Whereas, if your regression is concurrent, then what does it mean? There is no structural change. Okay. Yes. So, how, how we can check whether there is a structural changes or not? Chow has developed an, a test and this test is known as Chow test. Okay. And this test assumes that <coughs> the U1T and U2T, what is this U1T and U2T? We have two different set of data. U1T is the error term of the first data. U2T is the error term of the second data. Okay. And this Two error terms are normally and independently distributed with a variance, and this variance should be homoscedastic. Okay, so the thing is that u1 should be normal distributed, and u2 should be normal distributed, and this distribution should be independent, and the variance should be homoscedastic. This is the assumption which is made by the Chow, made by Chow. 
okay then how how we can do this analysis how we can check how we can test this first step okay estimate the third regression what was the third regression complete regression okay and obtain the rss okay with degrees of freedom n1 plus n2 minus k where k is the number of parameters to be estimated okay and this rss is known as restricted residual sum square rss r and because it is obtained by imposing the restriction that alpha is equal to alpha 1 is equal to beta 1 and alpha 2 is equal to beta 2. So, what is the first step? Do a complete regression, do a regression by taking the entire data and you find out the RSS and this RSS is known as restricted residual. Okay. So let me do it first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Look at the data. Here the starting date is 1990. So 1980. 2005. There are 26 years of data. <coughs> Why is the personal saving or saving aggregate saving and this is aggregate consumption sorry aggregate income okay now what is what the first step is says that you go to data analysis regression okay this is the y range this is the x range okay then label is there do a regression okay so we have run a, uh, we have done a regression then what i what we need we need rss okay uh, rss restricted rss restricted okay that means this is the residual sum square okay residual sum square so this is the value 23248 okay yes now next step what we have to do estimate the equation one And obtain RSS 1 okay estimate equation 2 and obtain RSS 2 and add RSS 1 and RSS 2 and this both RSS together is known as RSS unrestricted so what is the next step I'll show you what to do okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to yeah this is the first period so i am changing the color and this is the second one yeah okay so again i have to run separate regression for first period and second period and find out the rss1 and rss2 add this rss1 and rss2 then it is known as rss unrestricted okay let us see how we can do that go to data data analysis regression okay so this is the y data and this is the x data label is not there click ok what we need from here rss1 
okay this rss so yes rss 1 then rss 2 again go to data analysis regression we have to take this data second data for second period then x is the second period label is not the click ok then this is the data this is the thing that we need yes we have got it okay then you add these two okay this is what we called rss unrestricted okay 11790.25 okay so what is the next step yeah then the thing is that if there is no if there is no structural change equation 1 and 2 will be the same okay then rss restricted and rss unrestricted unrestricted should not be statistically different okay so this is the idea behind the chow test if both equation are same then rss restricted and rss unrestricted will be the one and same but here what you can see there is a difference so there is a possibility for the structural change and how we can test this can be tested <coughs> using f test okay so in f test you can see there is a it's a test which is having degrees of freedom for both numerator and denominator so here numerator is rss unrestricted minus rss unrestricted divided by k okay k is the number of parameters to be estimated then rss unrestricted divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2k okay let us see how we can solve it how we can find out this okay so look at rss f is rss restricted minus rss unrestricted divided by k k means number of parameters to be estimated okay it is 2 and divided by 2 5 7 2 9 and now what is the next one rss unrestricted divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2k okay is equal to rss unrestricted divided by n1 plus n2 26 minus 2k because we are we are having two equation in unrestricted model okay so there is a 4 It is 449.4513. Okay. So, what is F? This is basically F numerator and this is F denominator. And what is F actually? This divided by this. Your F value is 12.74614. Okay. Then now, what is the things? Here the null hypothesis is what? Null hypothesis is the regression 1 and 2 are statistically the same. That means there is no structural change or there is no structural break. Then alternative hypothesis is there is a structural change. Okay. Then what we can do? We can find out the associated table value for this regression. Okay then f table value is equal to f distribution or f inverse 
okay probability is 0 0.05 so degrees of freedom for the numerator is equal to 2 okay then degrees of freedom for denominator 26 minus 4 22 okay so it is around 0 0.05 okay then what would be the f distribution yeah comma two comma four Yeah, this is a F theta F proper value. Okay, so this F can this F value, this F is critical value. If actual value is greater than this critical value, what's the decision? If actual value is greater than table of critical value we can reject the null hypothesis okay so here we can reject the null hypothesis at even 0 0.000213 i mean you can 100 percent sure that you can reject this null hypothesis that means there is a structural break in 1991 okay yes so this is what we call the structural stability or uh, sorry structural uh, stability checking using chow test now we are coming to our topic there is a problem with this chow test what's it it won't tell us whether the differences is due to the intercept or whether it is due to the slope coefficient okay that means the difference differences can be occurred either the differences in the intercept or differences in the slope coefficient or for both or both okay but the tau test will only say whether there is a structural changes or not it won't tell us the sources of the variation or source of the reason for the tau test okay whether the reason of this variation is intercept or slope this can be explained by using the dummy variable technique how we can do that i will show you okay so you what we what you have what you have to do is you have to specify an equation how we can specify the equation y t is equal to beta 0 beta 1 dummy and beta 2 xt plus beta 3 dt xt so this we have already seen okay so what is this dummy dummy variable this is what quantitative explanatory variable and this is what interactive dummy or interaction of dummy with quantitative variables okay yes now assume that uh, if d, uh, I am giving d is equal to 0 for pre liberalization period and d1 for otherwise, that means I am giving 0 for pre new economic policy, that means for 1980 to 1991 uh, and for 0 for post liberalization period. Okay, so sorry, one, 0 for pre liberalization and 1 for. Uh, post liberalization period okay so what will be the average saving function for 1980 to, uh, to 1991 we are giving 0 for dt then it will be beta 0 plus beta 2 xt okay because the beta 1 will be cancelled because if you given 0 then beta 1 into 0 is equal to 0 
then what will be the average saving function for the second group second group is 90 this is a wrong okay, 90 92 to 2005 it will be beta 0 plus beta 1 plus okay uh, beta 2 plus beta 3 xt okay because beta 2 will be 1 and beta 3 will be also 1 so beta 2 plus beta 3 and xt will be common for both okay yes so let me show how we can do that okay the same problem what we are going to do we are going to assign a dummy dummy is equal to 0 4 pre d is equal to 1 4 post okay so 0 all these up to here it will be 0 then you give 1 okay yes now look at the equation equation is beta y c y we need d we are d also we need x t then d t x t we have to create an interaction interaction variables okay so how we can construct it it is d into x this is your x and this is your d you multiply these two and you, you drag it for all okay now you go to data data analysis regression uh, y range is this variable and x range is all these three variable label is there click ok yeah this is the y range and this is the x range yeah now you look at here i'm just copying this option to here okay yes now we have got the intercept okay so it is the average average saving of those people in which we have assigned zero then x is what x is mps it is 0 0.08 okay then the next one is the dummy the dummy will give you the differences between the average saving between two period okay it means that compared to the we have assigned zero for pre crisis so, so compared to pre crisis in post uh, sorry pre pre new economic policy in post period there is an additional 152 rupees on an average 152.47 is additional savings and what is this dx it is give you the shift or the changes in the slope coefficient between these two periods that means there is a changes in the slope coefficient okay so from this what you can understand there are differences in the intercept it is given by the coefficient of this dummy okay and there are differences in coefficient of your interaction dummy if the coefficient of this interaction dummy is zero then what does it mean the slope is same okay or if the dummy coefficient is zero what does it mean the intercept there is no differences in the averages okay but here you can see in both cases uh, intercept as well as 
slope coefficients are uh, not or uh, not the same it is changing it means that there is a pure structural changes happen in 1991 okay yes so this is the way we can use the dummy variable as an alternative to chow test to check the structural stability okay yes so this is all about today's sessions and tomorrow i will come with uh, one more uses of dummy variables okay thank you thank you very much